glory and the honor. Now, Father God, we thank you that you are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're the Father of glory. I thank you that you give unto each one of us your spirit of wisdom, your revelation. We thank you for the knowledge of you. We thank you for the eyes of our understanding to be open, to be enlightened, so that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, thank you for putting all things under Jesus' feet. Thank you for giving Jesus to be the head over all things to the church. You are the head, Jesus. We are the body. And you said that we are the fullness of you that filleth all in all. And we thank you for that and we give you the glory. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. Well, why don't, why don't you be seated, please? I want to just share some things with you here. Uh, you know, God is so good to us all. Do we realize that the greatest force in the universe is words? Words are stronger than an atomic bomb. But do we really realize that, we, do we really take that into our hearts? I get a challenge with that sometimes. I gotta admit I do. And then I gotta take the word and I gotta just bathe myself in the word because the enemy comes at you. But God said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, what he said in 2 Corinthians here, I, I just had to bring this forth. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, now, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by, his, by us, we pray you in Christ did be reconciled unto God. Getting, getting to know God has made us joint heirs with him, Galatians, he tells us that. But also when you look at this, look at, at Adam and Eve in the garden. Why did God say, where are you, Adam? He knew it. He wasn't inquiring about his location. He was inquiring about his position in the earth, his leadership over everything. Does that make sense? Instead of, where are you? Where is your position now, Adam? You lost it all. But God still went with him. But he had to operate in the natural realm, didn't he? Did God still speak to him? Yes. But it wasn't that wonderful fellowship like they had before. Now there was the devil who came in because Adam made Satan his father. But God never left him alone did he so now when when i talk about this great force let's let's look at something i think is really important we'll look at peter no we're not going to go to peter hang on to that mark but you know there's 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 radio tv signals all that is going on in here isn't it we know that we know that there this there's angels in this room to get that, the fullness of that, you go, I can't feel them. No, you can't because it's a spiritual realm and that's why we have to go from the natural realm where we live because we're from two worlds. We're from the heavenly kingdom and we're from the earthly kingdom. So now we know how to live here, don't we? Sometimes, and I'll say about me, it's become too much of a part of me. Then I've got to take this, or I don't have to, but I choose to take this word and I choose to step into that spiritual realm and take what rightfully belongs to me. But then Paul says to fight the good fight of faith. And how does faith come? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you take and you speak the word of God over yourself, what does that do for you? That encourages you. It lifts you up. When you pray in the spirit, you're edifying yourself. 
you're getting the power of the Holy Spirit speaking through you. And could I, rebooting you? Like you reboot a computer? It's rebooting you and getting your attention. So now in Mark 11, 12 through 14, so if you're writing that down, because I want to look at the fig tree. I want to look at this whole situation. What is Jesus really talking about in there? We look at that and we say, well, that's no big deal. It is a big deal. Now, Mark 11, 12 through 14, it says, On the morrow, and when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. So Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. If happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Well, what's happening here? On verse 14, Jesus and Jesus answered, Jesus answered, Jesus answered and said unto it, what is he doing answering a fig tree? Was that fig tree speaking to him? You don't believe me? You look at your bank account and it isn't where it should be. It's speaking to you. Hmm? You look at your body and, and maybe you got a backache or a headache. It's speaking to you, meaning there's a problem. Something needs to be fixed. Well, what we do is we look at our bank account and we say, ooh, that is good. That's better than what I thought. Because we are ambassadors for Christ, meaning we are here as partners with God. He, he's number one. And we're seated in heavenly places in him, aren't we? Amen. Ephesians 2, 6, he said it. So now he wants us to step into that spirit realm and take our rightful position. So when Jesus Christ came to this earth, he had to come as a human being so that his flesh could die for us. It was our flesh that he took into hell with him. So we went into hell with him, died, and he rose up, he rose us up, and now we're seated in heavenly places. We're not living in the Old Testament where we have to give sacrifices and so on and so on and listen to a prophet. We are the prophet. How are you the prophet in what you speak? What are we speaking? What are we speaking? You can have whatever you ask for. But when we speak, what happens? So many times what happens is, is we, we get discouraged because the devil comes immediately to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? And he puts thoughts on your mind, and you go, oh, I didn't think it was going to work. Stop it. So let's, let's, let's get this here, and then we'll get into something a little more here. Now, the fig tree was talking to him. Well, why was it talking? How did God create the fig tree? First of all, he created you and I to rule and reign on this earth through the one Jesus Christ. So when we pray, we say, in Jesus' name, because he's the one that does it, we don't do it. I have the power and the authority only through Jesus. All right? And through his word. He has given us his word. And when you speak the word of God, it's the most powerful force, more, power, more powerful than an atomic bomb. Hey, that thing can't overtake him. Did the atomic bomb kill him? No. But with the fig tree, he created the fig tree. And how he created it, it was not doing what he created it to do. So he looks and he comes and he sees leaves and he's like, uh-uh, you're wrong. First the fruit comes on the fig tree, the figs, and then the leaves. So he saw from afar off it was not doing what it was supposed to do, what it was created to do. So he's speaking to the thing and he's telling it, no man shall eat fruit from you anymore. You are disobedient. You're doing it your way and not my way because I created it to do it this way. Then the devil got a hold of you, and now you're doing it the devil's way. 
so there will be no more fruit from you, and he cursed it. Hmm, isn't that amazing? The tree was violating what the creator had created. Now, the wonderful thing about it is we have this word of God, and when we speak this word of God, it has to come to pass. He says, only believe. But you know, sometimes these stories, they're true stories, okay? Sometimes God uses an example. But he says, only believe. So now just think, speaking to something, if something doesn't work the way you want it to, speak to it and tell it to work, okay? Oh, this was crazy. Here I am, I'm leaving the house this morning, turned around, I put my bag, I got that bag, and there's a little, you know, the zipper, and then that little hook, and there's a little open. I caught the back of this here on that, and here I'm going to put it on the back seat. Here I am sitting in my garage, sitting in the back seat, trying to, because I don't want to go in the house and try to, you know what I'm saying? Did I get, I used to get angry and all frustrated and sweat a while, and that's all I did was say, Holy Spirit, help me. Took care of it. I got here, I said, Kim, check it quick. She said, Mom, you can't see anything on it. It's not a big pull in it or anything. See, the Holy Spirit will not only get you out of the situation, but it'll fix it. That's what he, that's where God wants us. He wants us in that spiritual realm. You, right? But the thing of it is, let, let's go on with this. Jesus answered and said unto them, no man shall eat any fruit. So this tells us, when we speak the word of God, there, we're going to bear fruit. When we speak opposite of the word of God, we're not going to bear fruit. That's as simple as it is. So God was checking Adam. He wasn't saying, where are you? He was saying, where is your position with me now? Right? Your position with me has changed. But since Jesus Christ went to the cross and rose from the dead, now we're in right standing with God. We have got a position in Christ, just like Adam and Eve. They only lived in the spiritual realm. But now we live in the natural realm. So we've got the five senses, and they can really get you in trouble. Did you ever go into... Oh, a, 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 a bakery and you can smell them donuts, you can smell that fresh bread, what's the first thing your flesh does? And a couple later you're saying, I shouldn't have done that. Are we all guilty? You see, that's how powerful the senses can be. But the word of God is more powerful than that. When we take the word of God and we put that first place, like it says in Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God, take him first and apply the word because the enemy is always like the devils there's devils in there there's demons in there they have a right to be here but this is not theirs that right there your flesh does not belong to them but they want to get your words because if they can get your words they can mess you up then then that enemy can enter in and he can mess you around God says, know the truth so the truth can set you free. Did you ever get you, get, you get carried away in something, and all of a sudden you say, no, it's not supposed to be like that. This is the way it's supposed to be. Did you ever do that? Is that getting hankering mad? Hmm? Junkyard dog mad? Some, does it just get you? Yeah, it's like, no, that's not going to be that way. Hmm? You've got to sometimes get a little feisty and say, stop, in the name of Jesus. Because that name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When you realize the power that we have through Jesus Christ, there is nothing more powerful than the Word of God, than Jesus, than the Holy Spirit. We don't pray to the angels. Each one has a guardian angel. What? They'll lift us up, lest we dashed our foot against a stone. Oh, my God. I have the most powerful God in the whole world. You have the most powerful God in the whole world. i got to just tell you this. Yesterday, um, 
Sammy and I went. I told him last year I had taken him, and, and uh, he liked it and stayed right by that fence with those, you know, the horse show. One week you're down there with a the life vest. Everything is crowded, right? And all these bands are playing, and it's in the, in the edge, the stage. And now this last weekend, the horses were in that edge. <laughs> Okay, and in the barns and so on that, that, that vendors were and stuff. But from one week to the next, how it changed. But as I'm standing and I'm watching those horses, they tell them, trot, canter, whatever they tell that horse, around, this is an animal. Always remember, an animal is not a human being. People get more upset over somebody killing a cat or a dog. Thank God that abortion center is closed down. Human beings are so much. Listen, once you have that little baby, everything changes. Your whole outlook on life, you take that baby and you think, look at that. We created that, Kenny. But who is the author and the finisher? of that baby. It's Jesus Christ. It's God. It's the Holy Ghost, the three in one. What he has given us the authority to do. But I look again how those horses are trained. They've got the buggies. They've got the English saddle. They've got the western. They've got it all. I just, you know, I can't help it. When I come there, I see, that I just start crying. I can't help it, and I'm kind of trying to hide out. So nobody, I'm just crying because it is so, don't laugh. <laughs> My daughter and daughter-in-law know me, you know, and don't laugh either, Earl. But it, it, to me, it is the most, I, horses are one of my favorite animals. Dogs and cats, I like all of those, I do. But horses just stand out, you know why? Because we're gonna come riding on a white one. We're coming back. We're coming back. But when you see, you know they take shoe polish and they polish the hooves when they're, so they're nice and shiny. The horse farrier was there and on the back of the truck he's got, it's, it's a, you know horse farriers trims the horse's hooves shoes the horses on the back of the truck okay is this big plank like you know and all the different size shoes for the horses are on there they even wear different sizes than we do right isn't it amazing but everything is so perfect they shave in the ears they shave the little whiskers off everything is if there's a white spot where they don't want it they put some polish on it so that thing comes out there, they braid their tails, they braid their manes. They even put a wig on their tails in parts, a, pee, a horse tail. They'll, they'll hook it into the regular tail so that it is dragging even on the ground. It's the most beautiful thing. God created that horse. And that horse will do what that owner tells them to do. You see a little eight-year-old girl, and she's on this big old, uh, that was a, a Western, I think, not a Morgan, and they're a little bigger. She's up there, and just through those reins, she's moving that horse around. And I'm like, what? Every time I see that, I, just a little girl, just a little pull. Ah, that horse knows the rider has the authority. Right? Well, Father God has given us the authority over the enemy. When we ride, right? When we take charge of what God has given us, we speak the word, and the word is what activates everything that goes on in our lives. We have the authority. That's what he said. I believe it. That's good enough for me. Would you say? Now, in Philippians 4.19, it says, My God shall supply all of my need. But what's the first word? It says, but. But. This is in the King James. Because if you look, you look at, at your health, you look at your checkbook, you look at your business, what are you looking at? 
Then you look at it, and there's a promise. My God shall supply all of my need according to, according to, according to his. Say, according to. According to. According to, according to his, riches his riches in glory, in glory. By, Jesus by Jesus Christ. Actually, it's Christ Jesus, the anointed one. He supplies it all. The only thing we have to do is work these here mouth muscles by speaking what we want. That's what God says. So now, remember, the, the disciples said when the demoniac, the, the, the demons wouldn't come out, and they went, how come he didn't? You know, Jesus came up, and he rebuked them and told them to get out and so on and so on. And they said, how can we couldn't do that? And he got a little uppity at him. He said, you've been with, well, he didn't say this, but I'll say this. You've been here now with me for three years, and you still don't get it. And they were right there with him. So he said, it's your unbelief. But you know what's awesome? He has covered that for us now. He'll say, all of these scriptures, this wasn't written for them. But we can say now, only believe. Only believe the word, but in Isaiah 55, his ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. Is that true? It, I mean, wow, what happened to me? When I said, Jesus Christ, come into, I said, Jesus, come into my heart. I was at a Christian women's, heard her pray it. I prayed it because I know I was going down. I needed, the alcohol was too much. The smoking was too much. I needed help. It was like a ray of light. She just, I told you, she just glowed around her when she said that. But that was the day my world changed. Oh my goodness. But every day, your world, my world can change because we take what is in the natural and we change and we step into the supernatural and we speak what that says and it has to come to pass. Do you realize that? Well, now, let's, let's see something a little bit here. The tree, the tree was not doing what it was created to be, to do, right? Now, that's the lesson for us as well today. If something, that's how you discern. You're going to discern what's right and wrong. No, no, that isn't the way I was created. But that's what the world says. The world says, go out and get all the abortions you want. Use it as a birth control. Is it true? Is it true? The problem is, too many gals have suffered. They didn't know any better. And it's a horrible thing that we got away from our Constitution. But the hearts have to be healed now. The enemy comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to do what? Give life in abundance to the full, to the overflow. So now, what God says to them again, only believe, only believe, only believe. So there is, where is the power? The power is in the heavenly realm and inside of you. Because when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, he came into your heart. And when you speak the word, it's going back to him, and he promises that he'll watch over it, and he will bring it to pass. So can I hang on to that promise? Absolutely. Absolutely. A woman gets pregnant or wants to get pregnant. You can't tell that for maybe three, four, five, six months. And all of a sudden, whoa, I think you're pregnant, you know? It's there. But no one could tell in the beginning. It took time for that to happen in the natural, didn't it? Right? Okay. But now... I'm, I'm going to say we have to discern. Some things are going to take longer than our, others to happen. Okay. There is, um, when you talk about healing, when you talk about wealth, when you talk about anything that you have prayed on, what do you need to do first? What did Jesus Christ do when he was in the boat? You all know these stories. Remember when he was he was walking out, did he go, did Jesus Christ, was he always there to help the disciples? He was always there. 
He was always there to help the disciples. And when something went wrong, he was there to fix it. Well, you know what? We've got it even better today. We've got the Holy Spirit right inside of us. We've got the Word of God. That's all we have to do is speak. So here they are. Okay? He's coming. He's, well, he was sleeping in the boat, sorry. And the wind came. The seas, it was just horrible. And they were afraid, weren't they? And what happened? It was overtaking them. Jesus, Jesus, my words. What did he do first? This is what I'm getting at. What did he do first? He spoke to the wind. The wind was the demonic evil force. The wind was the demonic evil force. And then he did what? Then he spoke to the sea. Well, why too? Because first of all, he rebuked the evil that was causing the sea to be so disruptive. There are evil forces. There can be generational forces that come against us, right? Because you get passed on from your father and your mother and you go to the doctor. Well, what runs in your family? And you start telling me everything that ran in your family. Well, now we got to watch out for this. Now, when you get to be 50-some years old, you know, your father died of cancer. Your mother had breast cancer. Oh, you can't. Ooh, we got to watch these things. And every year you go in, they're watching it. Sure enough, they'll find a problem with it. If you op Doctors are not bad. You all know that. I know doctors, friends. But what we have to do is go on another level. What do we do to the evil that's curses that's that's running in our life? We break it by rebuking it, by cursing it. What did Jesus Christ do with the tree? He first he cursed it, didn't he? And where was it cursed? At the roots, right? What happened? Did they see it right away? But did it happen right away? The next day when they went through, what did they see? The leaves were withered. Peter's going, whoa, what happened to this? This is so neat. It was neat. But Jesus was teaching them and us that when you speak, the root of that thing is cut off. I just cut some of my little yellow flowers out in front, and I was saying that I think on Wednesday or the women's Bible study. And I put it in my little vase, and how many days ago was it? it it's, it, it's cut off. It's dead, but it still looks alive. Is it going to die soon? You know, you take a tulip. They don't last too long. Some flowers last longer than others, right? Some things can come on our bodies or come into situations in our lives and our businesses, and sometimes it takes longer once you've cursed the root of it for it to actually come into order. And that's the time when we fight the good fight of faith. Think on that. That's a good thing, isn't it? So we're fighting the good fight of faith. What do you mean? We, we are fighting to stay into this believing in, in the spirit realm instead of the natural realm. Because that's where we want to go right away is in the natural realm. You true? Because it's what you see, it's what you feel, it's what you think, it's what you smell. No, 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 no. And, and we're, we're working on something. Can I say that? We're always working on something. But you'll know more than get in belief and somebody will come along and tell you a horror story or say, you can't do that, you can't do that. You just go, talk to the hand. No, no. I can do all things through Christ Jesus because he said all things are possible. Even little kids. Just think of that. Mm -mm -mm. God is good. Well, what I want to do... I want to do this here. This is um, in 2 Kings 6. And this is the voice translation. And I did this with the girls, but this is just so delicious. And I'll just kind of go through it and read a little bit of it here and there. But just to get an understanding of all of the angels that are here right now that are with you everywhere you go. Remember, Jesus could call on legions of angels. Okay? 
we can call on the Holy Spirit. He, see, when, when you cry out to God, when you speak the word of God, whoosh, they're on the scene. They're on the scene. And God will not hold anything that's good for you from you. He will give you the desires of your heart. But this is our biggest problem, the tongue. Right? So now, we've got Elisha. Elijah was, he handed the mantle to Elisha, right? Now, it's talking here, it says, it says, the place where we are staying with, we are staying with you is too small for us. Allow us to travel to the Jordan Valley, cut down trees and build a house there for ourselves. I, I'm going to do a little bit about the iron wax, the the um, axe head, and then I'll go into him, okay? So, here they're down. Here the, here's Elijah. This is his life. He's going along. He was a prophet, and whatever something needed to be done, he could do it. Only through Christ Jesus, because he listened, because he was a prophet. You are a prophet. God said, you're a pro that, when you're born again, you prophesy the words. That's what a prophet is. All right. So Elijah said to them, go, because these people asked him a question. Go, one of the students, will you please travel with us, your servants, Elijah, Elisha? Yes, I will go with you. Elisha traveled with them, and they cut down trees. When they arrived at the Jordan, while one of the students was cutting down a tree, the iron of the axe broke off and dropped into the river. The student to Elisha, oh my master. Now, who is your master today? God. God, Jesus, that's your master. The axe is not mine. I borrowed it. I mean, he borrowed it. He didn't have money to go pay another one. Can get, get into this. Now we borrow something, we say, oh, I lost it, too bad for you. No, you're supposed to cover that. If you break something or if you lose something, you should cover it. You should be responsible for it. Hmm? So now he says, it broke, student of the prophets. Oh, Elisha, oh, no, the ax is not mine. I borrowed it. Where did you drop it? Back to that. The man showed Elijah where he had dropped it in the water, and Elijah took a stick and tossed it into the river, and the iron and the iron of the axe floated to the surface. Tell me about that. They weren't the little ones like we have now. You gotta go back in history. This was big. This wasn't no little like we've got now. So when he's going at that tree, that thing flung out there, and Oh, no, I borrowed the axe head. Now, where did you, where do you think it is? And he threw the stick in as a sign of the cross of Jesus Christ. And what happened to the axe head? It did float. How? You can't even get a quarter to float or a penny to float. Come on. This was surely God all the way. This is a true story. This is not a makeup story. It's hard to, is that hard to believe? Hard to believe. Tom, you deal with wood. Does this seem like this could happen? Not in real life. Not in real life, thank you. But in the spirit realm, what did, this was Old Testament. We've even got it better today than what they had then. That's what God's word says. It did float, and the man picked it up. Ooh, that is so good. The iron, the iron of the axe floated. Get the iron out of the water. The man grabbed it then. Well, let's go into something else now. Now, we've got an army that's coming up against Israel. Did Israel, the, is that God's chosen people yet today? Say yes. Are you God's chosen people since you are born again? You've asked Jesus into your heart? Yes. Is he with us? Yes. 
we've even got it better than this. So, Aram king had waged war against Israel. See, anybody who comes up against you is in big time trouble. You're God's favorite child. People don't want to mess with you. He gave instructions to those who had served him. I want my war camp at this particular place. A war camp? Yeah, because there's going to be a battle. The man of God sent a message to Israel's king. Elijah's message, be sure not to travel through this place. The Armenians are on their way. Israel's king passed this warning on to those in the place the man of God had told him about. Elijah's warning saved, king, saved Israel's king more than a few times. Aram's king became greatly angered by this. He gathered his servants together. Oh, this is the king. He was really upset. Somebody's giving some information out, right? And he's saying, which one of you has betrayed me and sided with the Israel's king? God, God will always side with you even if you mess up. Do you know that? Servant, it is none of us, my lord, the king. The prophet Elisha, who lives in Israel, is one who informs the Israel's king of these things. Elisha somehow knows everything you say, even secret things you whisper in your private chamber, your bedroom your bathroom, he knows, God knows. Now this is the king saying, find Elijah right away so that I may capture him. What do you think he wants to do to him? The servant found Elijah and informed the king. Elijah is a door, D-O-T-H-A-N. Is he, what is he? He's a dispatcher. He's somebody that's speaking wrongly. So the king dispatched a great army of warriors along with many horses and chariots and they encircled the city at night. Hmm. Then in verse 15, the servant of the man of God woke up early and went outside. There he saw a great army along with many horses and chariots encircling the city. Elijah's servant. I mean, you, here, here, Elijah and the servant, you got to get this picture. Get up in the morning, they go outside. <gasps> what is going on out here? Alas, master, what are we going to do now? What did he see? Elisha, have no fear. We have more on our side than they. They were encircled by the enemy, the warriors that were coming up again. They were going to get Elisha. And that meant if they got Elisha, they were going to get the servant too. They were in big time trouble, do you think? In the natural. Because the servant is saying, we're in trouble. Then he says, praying, O eternal one, I ask you to allow my servant to see heavenly realities. See, when we pray that prayer, open the eyes of my understanding in Ephesians chapter 1. God will open your eyes to understand what's going on. He'll open your eyes to see in the word of God that you literally have angels that surround you. You've got the protection no matter where you are, what's happening. He's got you covered. You know those boys that were down in that cave and they rescued those boys? They said one was a born again Christian. God had to rescue him. He had to rescue the rest. God will protect. God promises. The eternal awakened Elijah's servant so that he could see. This is what he saw. The mountain was covered with horses and chariots of fire surrounding Elisha. When the enemy approached, Elijah prayed, Enter, no, Elijah, eternal one, I ask you to blind these people. What Elisha could do whatever he wanted. He sounded pretty powerful, right? 
He could open the eyes of his servant because what? Elijah could see in the spirit realm and he believed the word of God because the spirit of the Lord would come upon him. You have the spirit of the Lord in you so you can believe that 24-7. So what did Elijah say? I ask you to blind these people. He just goes like, I ask you to blind them, the warriors. There was such a big number. The eternal, the eternal blinded them just as Elijah had requested. Elijah to the blind army, you are wrong. This is the wrong path and the wrong city. I will lead you to the person that you are really after. This is Elijah talking to them. They all went blind. They, they had to trust somebody. Elijah said, take your hands, take your hands, right? Where did he lead them all? Right to Israel's king. Right in, there was no, there was no fighting. There was nobody died. Isn't that amazing? So then they said, well, should we kill him? He said, no. No, no. They're going to be our friend. And they were. But there's other times when God had them taken out. Why? Because they would only stop the move of God. Now, thinking about that all, they fed them, they sent them back, but they knew, don't you ever touch us again. That's where you have to get with the enemy. You're not going to touch us again. Listen, what does he say? This evilness, this disease, this poverty will not return a second time. God has given us promises. We take those promises and we bring them to past. So now, I'm going to go back to the fig tree again. I'm going to go back to that. What do we do? There's a curse. Okay, he cursed the fig tree. What did that do with the roots? What did it do with the roots? It cut the roots, it cut the roots off. What happened to the tree? Can a tree live without roots? When you curse that evil sickness that's going on in your body, when you curse the evil of, of poverty, when you cur any evil, when you curse it, it's cut off at the roots, it cannot continue to grow. Only believe. Now, with Daniel, when he prayed, okay, the first time he prayed, it took three minutes. First prayer to be answered. Remember Daniel? The next time it took three weeks. But both times God said to Daniel, I heard you, I'll, I'll put it in my, I heard you right away, and I already took care of it. But there was a demonic spirit that was holding you back, right? Well, see, that happens today. Some things happen just like that. And the next time, you've got to stand there longer and fight the good fight of faith with the word of God and stand there. You see, that's why you don't give up because we expect when you get prayed over, you close your eyes, you open your eyes, oh boy, look at that, everything has changed. I just dropped 80 pounds. And, oh man, I got a new hairdo, all my hair grew back, you know. Get a real life. First, you curse the what? You curse the evil. Sickness is evil, right? Anything that's evil, you curse it. And then you, because, okay, you curse it. You, we got that. And then you speak the healing. Then you speak, speak those healing scriptures. And if it takes longer, it's going to take longer. But you don't give up. Wherever the enemy is coming against you, you curse whatever evil that is, and then you take the word of God and you put it first place. And you praise and worship God because you know 100% everything is going to be taken care of. 100% God guarantees it to us. So we don't hear it right away. We don't see it right away. We don't smell it right away. We don't expect, we say, oh, no, no. No, no. Start thinking this way. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, the root was cut off. Okay? The next day you could see that 
it had died. It was evil because it that did not produce according to what God ordained it to produce. It was supposed to produce fruit, figs. Then the leaves, why it does that, I don't know. Usually, you know, you get, well, we get apples. What, what comes first, you know? Different things. I know there are flowers that get a big stem, everything, and then finally the flower comes, and the next one the flower comes, and then. But the whole thing here is when you curse something that's wrong, you know it's evil. And once you've cursed it, it's cut off. And then you're going to restore the body, you're going to restore the finances, you're going to restore whatever has to be restored with the word of God. First, he spoke to the sea and he cursed the wind. He, he bound it. That's cur he cursed it, he bound that wind. Because the wind was stirring up the ocean, wasn't it? Or the, the, the Jordan. It was stirring it up to cause more havoc. That was evil. Once that was cursed, the wind calmed, but then the seas, because that had been all stirred up for a while. And you know what? You get that, and that, that starts from, that doesn't calm right away. Go by the ocean sometime, and it can be really still, and you got things, but oh, once that ocean gets revving up, you, it takes a while to rev down. Sometimes it takes in the natural to get things revved down. So we take the word of God and we speak the word of God first. We discern, is it evil? I curse you, evil spirit of sickness. I curse you, evil spirit of poverty. And then once it's done, that's done. Now, what are you spending time on? You're spending time on putting things in order. He spoke, he said, peace, be still. Right? Some things are going to happen right away. Some things are going to take longer. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous over it. Just believe. Only believe because God promised you this is the way it was going to go, and it will. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give our, our tithes and our offerings because we so much love God. We love him, and we want to show our love for him and, and, and give but also we're going to take communion. We're going to take, because that's our, we have a covenant. In Psalms 91, it says we have a covenant. And through that covenant, we've got all of these promises and everything I just shared with you this morning. Take it, make it first place. Watch what comes out of your mouth because you know more, you know more than, than curse the evil and you know more and get peace and then right away your mouth goes because you can't see it happening in the natural. And you stir the whole thing up again. And it becomes a cycle. And you wonder, why do I keep on going around this same mountain? We don't have to go around the same mountain. We just have to believe, believe. So Debbie, would you come up please? We will praise and worship him. Remember, when you praise and worship God, that's prayer. That's big time prayer. You know that, don't you? So when you're praising and worshiping him, just give to him whatever you need. Take your time when you're at home and look at the things that are come against you. If it's evil, curse it. And then still the waters. Headache, I curse you, headache. By the stripes of Jesus' body. I command you are healed. There. You got the evil to stop, and now you got the word of God to start to work. But every day you're going to read scriptures. If you don't see it happening right away, don't give up. Got it? Debbie, let's do it. Yeah.
Anytime my heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move, on the move today Anytime in weakness someone falls upon their knees Or dares to speak the truth that sets men free Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move, on the move Hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today, yeah. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. Anytime the gospel stirs a searching soul. And someone says, send me here, I go. I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. God is on the move, on the move. On the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move, on the move today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. Oh, Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Father God, and I stand in agreement with each one that has brought their gift before you. That represents them in their heart. They love you, Father God. You promised a hundredfold return, and you said you will not be mocked. Devil, you are bound from operating against each and every person here and their families in the precious name of Jesus. I speak wealth over each one of you in abundance to the full, to the overflow. Health over each one of you in abundance to the full, to the overflow. Satan, you cannot hold back what God has ordained. It is released in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for that. Now we take communion. Psalms 91 says we have a covenant. It is true. That means we are partners with God. He is the God Almighty. We are his children. When we use the name of Jesus, all heaven and hell listens, and they have to obey that name. Now we break this bread because your body was broken, Jesus. When you went into hell, you took every one of our problems, every debt, every sickness, every you took it all. We are redeemed from the curse. We know our position because you have shown us our position. The same thing you asked Adam. We know because your word says it and we believe it and we stand on it in Jesus' name. Let's eat. Now, as we take the grape juice, his blood was shed for us. And his blood made us the righteousness of God. It justified us. We didn't do it. No. The only thing we did is say, Jesus, come into my heart. And when we did, 
It didn't take two, three, four seconds. It was like the blinking of an eye, and it was finished. And now it's time to believe and take the word of God and receive. And God said, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The kingdom of God is flourishing to support the kingdom of God. So souls will be saved in the precious name of Jesus. So those here and those watching online, you know what you do? You can invite people to know Jesus Christ. You can know him yourself. The only thing you have to do is to go to heaven, is to ask. Let's all do it. Jesus, Jesus. come into my heart. And I thank you that now I'm the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let's drink. Now, Father, I thank you that the blessings, the blessings overflow. I thank you. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any tongue that rises up against us, we will show to be in the wrong. Encourage yourself with the word of God. Not what other men and women say. Take the word, the pure word of God and apply it to every situation so that you can know the truth and the truth will set you free. Father, I thank you for that in the precious name of Jesus. Ah, he said, keep your neck stretched out because the blessings are here. But now they're coming from the spirit into the natural. Expect a harvest every day, every day. Every day, expect the harvest in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. God is good.